This is Helga, a classic 1989 Heimer motorhome that's six meters long and 2.4 meters wide and was bought for just 6,500 pounds. Inside this vintage time capsule, you've got all of the luxury items and amenities a modern day man like myself can't live without. <coughs> From a kitchen, shower and bathroom, bedroom options that can sleep up to four people and even these retro cup holders. We're going to take it for a drive to see what it's actually like to drive on the UK roads. Side note, it's left-hand drive. And then later tonight, I'm going to give you the real-life experience of what this camper van is actually like to cook in, to sleep in, and just to have the full motorhome experience. I feel like a French porn star and that somebody should be painting me. One of my favorite features on this is actually the shape of this vehicle. It's very strange, it's very peculiar. It literally looks like a rectangle. However, at the front, you've got a curved windscreen. It makes the windscreen feel absolutely massive when you are sat inside and makes the driving experience, I'm sure, so much better. So at the front left of the van, something I've not seen before, the fuel cap where you'd actually put in diesel or petrol to the vehicle is literally as far forward as you could go. So further down the side of the vehicle, you've got a nice bit of storage in here which you can open up. You can put all of your camping equipment inside, your chairs, your sun loungers, whatever the heck it is. And then the final thing at the back of the van is your cassette toilet. And of course, in a minute, I'll show you the inside because I absolutely love this bathroom. So we're now going to head into the inside where we're really going to get some proper retro vibes. But before we do, We've got a nice step here that helps you to get in and out of the vehicle. However, this one is completely different to the new Venture Surf because unfortunately it's not electric. It's a complete DIY job. You've literally got to pull this lever here and also push the step up to get it back in. It has a knack and a quirk, but at least it helps you get in and out. I genuinely cannot tell you how grateful I feel right now to be able to stand up in a vehicle because it's been a hell of a long time coming. The last few vehicles that I've camped in have been ridiculously small. As soon as you walk into the van, you've actually got the kitchen. And one thing I absolutely love, I've got to say about motorhomes, is that each designated area of the vehicle feels so separate. We've got a kitchen, we've got a bathroom, which of course I'll show you in a second. We've got the living room, the dining room, and the cab area. And it just makes the vehicle feel so much bigger. So underneath this countertop space, you've actually got the sink, which just pops up and pops down to hide it away. You just fold that down, covers it. Nice bit of work surface space to do a bit of chopping. On the opposite side, you've got a two hob gas burner, which may or may not work tonight. We'll find out because it's an old vehicle. There's a few things not quite working, but we'll test it out later. Underneath the gas hob, you've actually got a fridge which runs off gas and electric. And of course, when you're actually plugged into a campsite, we have got loads of storage in this vehicle, which is great to store all of your pantry goods, your baked beans, your cans of tin tomatoes, whatever it is. One thing I really like, there's actually a really old school dial system here that literally just shows you your levels of your water tanks, your fresh, your waste water tanks, actually the levels of the batteries, the leisure battery and the actual vehicle battery. And, oh, hold on a second, we have an extract. We have an extractor fan, which just takes a couple of seconds to turn on but bloody brilliant. Up above me, we've got a skylight for some ventilation and inside here, my favorite room in the entire motorhome, a 1989 bathroom, which literally looks like my grandma's house back in the day. If you're asking to yourself, Will, why do you like this bathroom? Well, we've got a toilet, we've got a sink here, which actually has a shower head attached to it. Pretty simple, but I'm sure it will do the job. You've then got, if I can find a way of clipping this back on, you've got a small bit of additional storage in here and this very cool crystallized light, which just gives a nice little vibe in here. It feels nice for once to actually have a proper toilet again, because instead of running off into the woods like a madman with some toilet roll in my hand, I can actually use the facilities inside the vehicle. As with most motorhomes and even in an old classic like this, you've got so much storage for absolutely anything you desire. Six cupboards either side, which are nice and deep. We've got a nice bright skylight up above. Oh wow, this really is a windy skylight. <laughs> there is no fan in here, but that's obviously because of the year of the vehicle. So this and the other one down in the kitchen, you crack that open, you'll get a nice draft running through. As you guys can see, there's a lot of different colors going on in this vehicle. We've got the yellows, we've got the blues, we've got the brown mahogany the classic vintage James Bond style vibes. And where I'm sat right now is obviously the dinner table, your office, but it actually also converts 
into another bed. One of my favorite features and something that I've noticed a lot about this vehicle, there's been a lot of thought that has gone into actually building this considering how old it is. The simple thing of cup holders on either side of the table. So if you're sat here with your partner, you can just put your cup in there. You're not gonna knock it over. I think it's bloody brilliant. On the opposite side of the table, you've got a lovely long bench, which next to it, it literally looks like it's a radiator that you'd find in a home, but actually it's not. It is the Truma heater, which like I said earlier on the outside will heat up your hot water and the actual van. So tonight, like the 90,000 pound motorhome, I'm actually gonna be sleeping above the cab. However, there's a big difference between that vehicle and this vehicle, the price difference. This vehicle was actually bought back many years ago, about 10 years ago for six and a half thousand pounds. That is a huge saving and such a good reason why you should go for an old classic vehicle like this, because you get so much more value for your money. I love that holding this bed up is actually a little seat belt holder. And then you just pull it down, push it into place. And now my bed for the night. Let me just move this stuff over. Uh, so you've got curtains all the way round the side of the bed, just to obviously add a bit of privacy. We've got a skylight here, which to be honest with you, I didn't even realize existed until I pulled down the bed. Looks a bit old and manky, so I'll leave that one in place because I know they did have a few issues with the front skylight. But this is tonight's bedroom and where I'm gonna be camping out. Fingers crossed, I should actually get myself a good night's sleep. So this is pretty much the inside of this Heimer. Keep watching until the end because you're gonna see me camping and sleeping in this. And in a minute, I'm actually gonna take it for a drive and see what driving a left-hand side vehicle is actually like in the UK. For the first time in my life, I'm gonna be changing gear with a shift gear stick lever, which is what I think they call it in America, but it's not very popular here in the UK. So we'll have to see how that one works out. <laughs> Here we go. I don't know what happened there, but we're live and we're ready for action. And I'm a little bit nervous. First gear. I think that's first gear. Gonna take you call second gear. I think I'm into third gear. We are. <laughs> It sounds like a tractor, but it feels like I'm driving a bus. Roundabout. Third gear. Into second. Let's go. Indicator on the left. Swing the bus round. It's definitely not as bad to drive as I was expecting. Purely because of the reason of the stick shifter and having never driven that before, it's actually relatively easy. It kind of just glides its way across the road. Yes, it's wide. Yes, it's a big vehicle, but it's bloody good fun. For me, I absolutely love driving the old classic motorhome vehicles because they're quirky, they're different. A lot of times with the newer vehicles, they often feel like they drive themselves. But with a vehicle like this, you are getting the full experience. See, if I tried to slip it now into first gear while I'm rolling, it wouldn't work. You actually have to stop the vehicle completely dead, put it into first, and now I can pull away. And hopefully not stop. The bus is coming through. Tonight's park up, a little bit different than the usual ones that we normally go for. Usually we like to stick to the woodland car parks where it's empty, where there's space all around us. 
However, we are literally in probably one of the most popular van life park ups in Portsmouth. You've actually got loads of van lifers who actually live in their vehicles over there. You've got us parked up here with a beautiful view of Portsmouth when the sun is out. I can tell already there's going to be a few activities going on here tonight and I'm not talking about what you think I am. I'm more talking about racer boys because about two minutes ago we just had a couple of them come around here on their scooters, rev the hell out of the place and then bomb off and then a Mini Cooper just come and do a couple of donuts. So uh, we're going to jump inside, spend the evening inside the motorhome because I love this camper. I think it's bloody brilliant. So much space in there. Every time I'm driving it or I actually stand up in there, it feels like I'm on holiday. And with a view like this tonight, I'm going to enjoy that holiday spirit. So it's now time to actually test out the kitchen in the motorhome to see what it's actually like to use and to see how practical it is. Tonight's recipe hopefully should be pretty straightforward and a big shout out to HelloFresh because I've got a delicious teriyaki lemongrass beef recipe that hopefully we're going to cook up and do justice. Inside we've got four different recipes with a step-by-step -step guide of how to actually cook the recipes and all of the ingredients that we actually need to cook up these meals. <laughs> Probably without doubt one of my favorite things about using HelloFresh is the pure convenience because every week I'm able to eat and try cooking different ingredients that to be honest with you, there's no way I would ever cook in my life. There's no wastage of food actually rotting away in your fridge because absolutely everything that you need, the quantities are actually in this box, pre-prepared and ready for you to use for the recipes. I've completely forgotten to turn on the extractor fan, which is gonna help get rid of all the smells and the steam in here. If you had smell of vision, honestly, it smells absolutely divine in here. So this recipe is only one of the 44 recipes that HelloFresh actually have every single week and it's super easy. I literally choose four different recipes from my phone on the app, which makes things super convenient and easy. Big thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and today's dinner. If you guys want to check them out, make sure you do. You can head down to the link in the description where you'll actually get 60% off your first box and 25% off the next two months, plus some free gifts. Let's see how the teriyaki beef actually tastes like. Mm -mm -mm. This is a super tasty, easy meal to be cooking in a van. If you guys actually want to check out the recipe, I'll also leave in the description the step-by-step -step guide and the ingredients that you need to actually cook this one up. I tell you what, it's not every day I find myself a lovely little dressing gown, all thanks to the owner. I apologize for that. And somewhere where I can actually wash my face and brush my teeth. Tonight is pure 1989 luxury. Bloody lovely. Do really like this dressing gown as well. It looks like my noisy neighbors could be hotboxing their vehicle, but one thing I actually forgot to show you guys earlier in the tour is this vehicle has got a bottle of Captain Morgan's Spice Drum. So I've got my glass here. I need a nightcap, I think, to try and send me on my way to get a half decent sleep, just to drown out the noise from the outside. I think it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? A shot of Captain Morgan's. I didn't think I'd be doing this in this particular video. <coughs> that with toothpaste is not a very good flavour. It was a hard summer night. So my bed for this evening is all set up. I'm looking forward to sleeping in here. Please do excuse me because if a bollock slips loose, I do apologize. I feel like a French porn star and that somebody should be painting me. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It looks like my mate next door could hopefully be going very soon. I'm going to be serenaded to sleep by a bit of take that. So as always, I will catch you guys in the morning and let you know exactly how I got on sleeping one in this park up and also up here in this bed. Good morning, everybody. Please, come on in. So I've got to say that last night's experience of sleeping in here wasn't actually anything wrong with the actual motorhome. Some noisy neighbors turned up at 4.30 in the morning 
and I've been pretty much wide awake since then. It's uh, 4.30 in the morning and uh, my neighbours are back. This is one of the worst park ups I think I've ever parked at. The park up has kind of ruined my experience of sleeping in here, but that's nothing, like I said, to actually do with the motorhome. It's to do with the surrounding area. So next I'm, I'm going back to the safe car parks of the forest. So it's time now to rate the vehicle and give you my evaluation of what I actually think this motorhome is truly like. So, in terms of the driving experience, I've got to say, I was pooing my pants before I stepped in here and drove it. The fact that it's left-hand drive in the UK, the fact that we've got this gear stick as an indicator, never experienced that before. But I've actually really enjoyed driving this because it's been something different. It's been something classical and vintage, and it's been a good fun experience. So the driving experience for this, I'm actually gonna give it a four out of five. So the comfort of this vehicle, as you have seen in this video, it is very, very comfortable. We've got a nice long sofa, which you can just lay on and be a little French porn star. We've obviously got the dining area with the table and everything. So this is a super comfortable vehicle, drop down bed. It's very practical, very spacious. So I'm actually gonna give this a four out of five as well. So as for the cooking experience in this vehicle, obviously it's not the most spacious kitchen that you'll ever get. It's a bit old, it's a bit classic, not everything works, but even with a basic simple kitchen like this, I was still able to cook up a delicious HelloFresh meal. If you haven't checked them out, make sure to check out the link in the description. So for this one, I'm actually gonna give it a three out of five. So for the stealthiness of this vehicle, don't ask me why I'm sat in the bathroom again. I'm actually gonna give this one probably a one because it's not a stealthy vehicle whatsoever it looks like something out of breaking bad it is your typical motorhome however just 34 years old i'm sure most people aren't getting a vehicle like this for stealthiness you're probably going to be staying at campsites most of the time and doing a bit of wild camping here and there so it's not the stealthiest vehicle but like i said it's not a vehicle you would get to be stealthy so for the quirkiness of this vehicle it's very retro it's very vintage it's an old school classic i wouldn't say it's the most quirky vehicle i've ever been in but because it's got those old school vibes going on, I'm actually gonna give it a two out of five. It is time to say bon voyage to the 1989 German Heimer. A good fun and another enjoyable experience as I cannot <laughs> get the seatbelt to stay in place. As always, if you guys have enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe and drop a comment down below what vehicle you think I'm going out in next.